How many people have got the constraint equation part figured out? All good? Okay. Well, remember, The idea is to release the constraint associated with the force you want to find. So in this system, I've written X and Y in here. Of course, you don't have to use those if you don't want, but this is how I've sort of written it down. And we're looking for F of S, the spring force. And so the idea is, is to release the constraint associated with the force you want to find. We're looking for the spring force, so we're going to release the constraint associated with that spring force. What do we need to do? Just cut the spring. You can cut it here, you can cut it here, either one, it doesn't really matter. Because the spring force is the same on either end of the spring. But what, what does that mean? <laughs> well, I mean, what ends up happening is we have a spring here. And then we have this wheel, and x is no longer just x prime any longer. The position of that wheel isn't necessarily where the end of the spring is, because we just clipped it. So what we're saying is that our constraint is equal to x is, x, x is equal to x prime. That would be our constraint. Right? Because if, if you connect the things back together, x is equal to x prime. The end of the spring measured from the left-hand side is equal to where the wheel is at measured from the left-hand side. So we have theta, we have a y, and all theta does is it relates, well, it used to relate x to y, now it just relates x prime to y. It doesn't relate x to y any longer. We had one degree of freedom, now we have two. So like, for example, your potential energy, it's one-half kx minus x naught squared, and this is the unstretched length. Because yeah. if, you, if you just cut the spring out entirely, then what you're doing is you're saying, well, the spring is gone. The energy associated with the spring is gone. And we're not saying that because we want to have the ability to figure out what the force due to the spring is. And so all of this still <clears throat> you're just changing the definition of the energy. You're just saying that the energy in the spring is one half K times quantity X minus X naught quantity squared. But then the position of the mass which, you know, drives our potential energy um, through mg y. 
it's the top part of the data. And then um, M Y double dot, or M Y, I would say one half M Y dot square kinetic energy. Those two parts are not necessarily associated with X any longer. And we could couple everything together. We could write every, all, all the motion in terms of either X or Y before, before we cut the spring. But now they're separated from each other. So the thing to keep in mind, too, is that this is our whole system. I mean, just because we clipped the system in two doesn't say we can just throw out parts of the system. We, we still, everything is in our box. We're just cutting pieces apart inside the box. Does this help any? Okay. Is this enough to get you going? Okay. What do you think, guys? Yeah, yeah, it depends on how you want to write your problem. You can write it in terms of, um, if you say that this is your datum, then, then the potential energy due to the mass is mg y. I mean, we can re redefine this. That's our new Y. Define it down to the mass. Okay. That's the idea. Any other questions on that one?